Steve from Blue's Clues once said something along the lines of, Often, the best gifts are the smallest ones. Clearly, he meant when ordering stuff over the internet and not our friends and family. And because the Creality CR10 ships in a big box, he was also wrong about that. Welcome to 3D PC, where we unbox a CR10 and put it together. Make sure you're subscribed for the upcoming CR10 video full of mods that make it quieter, print flexibles, and will even keep it running on battery power if there's a power surge where you live. Because this is the internet and comments are enabled for this video, I'm not going to use a broken knife to open up the box. Instead, I'm going to use a PCIe cover off a computer. It's not the right tool for the job, but the chances of stabbing myself are significantly lower. If you're a fan of unboxings, then you'll love this video because Amazon put the box inside another box. Wi-Fi My Cat was thrilled about getting a two-story cardboard condo, and he now felt that the $350 to $400 I spend on this printer were justified. With the first cardboard layer out of the way, we can pull out the actual product box, and at this point, you'll want to make sure you have a large surface to work on for separating parts and assembly. If you are using a sharp object to break the tape, just don't be stupid with it and cut too deep into the box with it. There is this foam, which is fine to slice, but you don't want to cut the rubber belt that moves the print bed back and forth. It's crucial that at this point you have a trained and certified professional inspect the sheet of glass to check for any damage or defects. Depending on the attention to detail, this inspection may require sitting and take a while. Thanks to a can of tuna, this inspection was over quickly, and I was able to get started on lifting out the bottom half of the printer. This cardboard box contains quite a lot, actually. This blue stuff is entirely optional, and after my first printer, I've never bothered putting on this cosmetic stuff to my other CR10s. There's also a power cable and a user manual. As a verified man, I will of course throw this to the side for the next several hours, then come crawling back once I skip a step and need to figure out why the printer was defective and not me. This scraper will help to get prints off the print bed, and the black metal piece and plastic tube are for holding filament spools. We also get a bag of spare parts in case something went missing, or you can't find that screw you dropped over the carpet. This is an extra filament guide tube. Do hang on to it if you're going to print PLA most of the time. If you print over 235 Celsius, you'll probably want to go with higher quality tubing in about a month or two. All tools for assembly are included. Very nice. USB cable, screws, micro SD card with adapter, warranty card, do hang on to that for leveling the print bed later, and a 200 gram roll of PLA to get you started. I've always gotten mine in white, but let me know what colors you get in the comments below. Everything can be set away from the assembly area, but you will need the tools and screws readily available. Now that the first layer of the printer is visible, it can be inspected. My inspector didn't like being rushed. I'm going to pull out the control box and put it to the side here. We'll come back to it in just a few minutes. Pause right here. That red switch is for selecting your mains voltage. In the United States, we don't use 220 volts, so I had to flip the switch. Now is as good a time as any to get that out of the way. There are the occasional foam blocks you'll need to take out. Getting the top half of the printer out of the box will require some gentle persuasion. Do keep it close though, because we're going to bring both printer halves together in a moment. For now, that should be everything out of the box. The first assembly step is to grab the printer's bottom half and remove it from the foam. There are some small parts to this printer, but surprisingly, the bigger pieces ended up being the choking hazard. The foam blocks have been the favorite cat toy the past few weeks. Don't throw out the biggest foam block just yet, we're going to use it in a future step. We will free the print bed by cutting away the plastic wrap. Remove and make sure to keep the four binder clips. I've never liked the included masking tape, I always get much better results from blue painter's tape at Walmart or Home Depot, wherever, as long as it's Formula 2090. 
You can print PLA straight onto heated glass too. I typically heat the bed up to 60 Celsius for glass PLA or PETG with tape, and if it's just a taped PLA bed, then 28C is fine for me. Since this is an unboxing, I do of course have to peel the plastic off the glass in slow motion. Nice. The plastic on the other side adhered to the glass much more tightly. With our unwrapped glass, we'll now attach it back to the print bed using the four binder clips. Make sure to always attach your binder clips at the front and back of the print bed, never the sides. And you want to avoid the first couple inches on the front left corner. The back side of the printer contains the stepper motor that moves the print bed on the Y axis. Move the cable that heats the bed to the back of the printer, keeping it out of the way. In this bag are two small metal plates, with nuts and bolts already attached. The T-shaped one will go on the right, and the one with a button will go on the left. On both of these plates, orient the nuts so that they run parallel to the shape of the T-plate. If you don't have any scissors to cut zip ties with, you can grab a cutting tool from the tools bag. Bring back over the top half of the printer. Remove the foam block and cut the zip ties. This CR10 came with a silicone block around the heater. Older CR10s I've used had tape and some sort of thermal cotton. Nice to see that this first free upgrade is already applied. Flip the top half of the printer over and move the Z-axis up a few inches. Grab the four long screws from this bag and the hex key to match. Assuming you don't want to scratch your table or the printer, grab the huge foam block and prop it up under the lower printer half. Remember, stepper motor is the back. Now we can also grab the top half, again, stepper motors in the back, extruder in the front. The four big machine screws are going up through the floor of the printer into the vertical beams. I find it easiest to start the bolts by hand and then tighten with the key at the end. Don't go crazy with the tightening at first. Get all four screws decently started and do the tightening once you have all four screws most of the way in. Grab the metal plate with the button and we'll get it to assist holding the two printer halves together on the left side. Do your final tightening once the right side is in too. Setting the printer upright, grabbing at the base of the printer, we gain access to the right side for that last T plate. Once the right side is tight, go back and finish tightening the left side. At this point, all screws and bolts holding the two halves together should be snug. Now is also a great time to give everything another inspection, just to make sure nothing else is loose on the printer. Now might also be a good time to move the printer where you want it to stay permanently, because once we add the control and power box, this printer becomes far less portable. Locate the metal bracket and plastic tube. There will also be two smaller Phillips head screws that we need. Attach the bracket, and the plastic tube will have at least one end that twists off to let it through the hole of the bracket. To put the spool on the spool holder, just break the vacuum seal and place it on the holder. Filament will travel through the extruder gears, down the white tubing, and into the hot end. Go ahead and attach your PTFE tubing just by pushing it into the fitting. I did have to trim just 5mm of my tube off for it to fit, but that's because the end of mine got squished during shipping. If you did want to add the blue accents, now is the time to do that. The profile sort of looks like a house, and the floor is what will face outwards. You can apply it most anywhere. Under the print bed will basically be impossible and is not recommended, and the front of the vertical beams is doable, but it will take twice as long as other areas and be incredibly frustrating. I did half of the accents on my first printer, but I didn't bother with any other CR10s. Getting back to functional parts of the printer, the control box needs to be hooked up next. Ignore the massive cables coming from the box, 
we're going to start with the cable sets that originate from the extruder and heat bed. Remember that all printer cables need to be behind the vertical beams. Insert and screw to lock in place. As for this tangled mess of cables, they have little yellow indicators that tell us exactly where they go. X, Y, Z, and E for extruder. Let's start with the Z motor. This is the Z set of four wires. The Z motor is the one with the long vertical screw that raises the print head up and down. The two wire cable goes to the button on the left T plate. Next up, it's the Y axis that moves the print bed back and forth. Two wires for the button, four wires for the motor. We are now left with the X axis and extruder. Extruder is the motor that feeds into the PTFE tubing. The two wire goes into the button which is located behind the QR code, and it's very difficult to do it one-handed while recording, but you can also push it in with a hex key or a screwdriver to help if your fingers lack dexterity, such as mine. Before plugging in mains power and turning it on, once again check that your voltage is correct. The menus are navigated by clicking in or twisting the control knob. Make sure to level the print bed before printing anything. On one CR10, the print bed was high enough that homing the Z-axis actually didn't work, because the nozzle was pushing into the bed before it even got close to hitting the Z-axis homing switch. Remember that warranty card? Turns out it's useful after all. It should just barely fit between the nozzle and the build surface. I prefer for it to be close enough that the card is slightly pinched as it slides between. It should not be loose. Twisting the bed knobs to the left raises that corner, and turning it to the right will move it down. It's downright hard to remember that. Hint hint. Level all four corners once, then go around a second time to verify that it's all good. You should level the print bed every time you change from glass to tape, or swap nozzles, or change material. Once you get comfortable enough with leveling, you can start to do it by eye, just watching the first layer of the print. To load filament, preheat the nozzle. I'm also heating up the bed because I'm going to print on the glass directly. The top number is what the printer is targeting, the bottom number is the actual temperature. Cut the end of your filament to a point. To get it past the gears, pinch the arm to pull the wheel away from the gear. Keep pushing filament in until you see it come out the nozzle. With a heated printer, you should either now set it to cool down or go ahead and start a print. Twisting the control knob at the main menu mid-print will change the print speed, which can be useful. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see top picks for CR10 printer modifications, color accurate guides for 3D filament reviews, and if you won't do it for the videos, do it for Wi-Fi.